Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Steve Clemens. I direct the foreign policy programs at the New America Foundation and publish the, the political blog, thewashingtonnote.com. And I'm here with Zekmar Gabriel, who's the Environment Minister of Germany, a member of the Social Democratic Party, and here for what used to be called the Major Emitters Conference, uh, which has morphed into be the Major Economies Conference, which nonetheless talks about global emissions, climate change, and as we try to sculpt a very different approach for the, for the world's leading economies on climate change and leading to Copenhagen. Uh, Minister Gabriel, thank you so much for talking with us for a few minutes. Um, what are your big goals here in this conference? How do you see things shaping up? The first goal was to know what's the policy of the new American government, because uh, when we were here invited by the previous government two years ago, we heard nothing. Um, the previous government of the United States said to us that they are not sure if the science is right, they are not sure that uh, it's um, the reason is human beings and human industrialization. They doubted the science. They doubted the, si the science. And they and said that to you publicly and privately? Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Uh, um, uh, and uh, they were not able to tell us if they are willing to sign an international treaty where all the major emitters and the developing countries together want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions between today and uh, uh, 2020 and 2050 in a way that we uh, can be sure that uh, our children and grandchildren will not be faced with catastrophe consequences uh, of the climate change. And now we have a completely different approach. The new American government uh, trusts the science and they are willing to sign a treaty. But we had, of course, a discussion if uh, the ambitious uh, targets of the American governments are ambitious enough in respect to uh, the uh, results of the client, cl uh, science in respect of uh, the European uh, um, ambitions. And this was a detailed discussion and uh, we will have the next meeting in May in Paris mm -hmm. and then another one in July to prepare the heads of state and government because the, the members here, they represent 75% of the problems and 100% of the solutions. Right. And they have to prepare the discussions among heads and state of state and government because 200 environment ministers in Copenhagen end of the year will not solve the problem without guidance of the heads of state and government. So, let's be very clear though, today happens to be the 100th day of the Obama administration. So a lot of people are, it's a moment where we take stock. And my sense is that Barack Obama in foreign policy has pulled off a few minor miracles in the sense that the optical side of a potential restart with various troublesome countries is different. The real, the real doubt comes in is where policy and the substance of things are changing. So do you feel from the people you're meeting from the Obama administration here that they're genuinely from a policy position carving out something that might lead to a uh, positive result in, in, in uh, Copenhagen? Yes, I'm sure, because um, what they had presented to us I mean, it's not the same like the European approach. Mm -hmm. And from our perspective, they should be more ambitious, but... The Americans should be the more ambitious. The Americans should be ambitious. Um, uh, for example, our target in Germany is uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, up to the year 2020 to compare it with 1990 levels by minus 40, minus 40 mm percent. -hmm. If you see the Waxman bill, which, which is the most progressive proposal in the United States, right. uh, 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 compared to 1990 levels, you want to reduce by 6, 7 or 8 percent greenhouse gas emissions. So you see that there is a big difference between the targets in Europe and the targets in the U.S. But of course we know that uh, the U.S. started later mm -hmm. uh, and it's not so, so easy uh, to come to the same targets like the European Union. We had started our approach 10 years ago. Uh, and so now we have to look, are there space for maneuvers? Uh, can we be flexible between 2020, this is the midterm target, and 2030, that's one of the ideas. Because the question is, everybody wants to, uh, wants to say, yes, we want to have a long-term target by redu reduction of carbon dioxide by more than 80% in the developed countries. Politicians love long-term targets because our children and grandchildren have the uh, responsibility to fulfill these long-term targets. Mm -hmm. The question is, are you able to fulfill a mid-term target where you, can, you have the credibility that it, you are able 
to fulfill the long-term targets. If you do nothing until 2030, 2030, you will not able to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by more than 80% in the year 2050. And that's the discussion. Is it credible? Is it can uh, have the the, uh, the 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 trust that the U.S. policy will really mm. get more progress after 2025 and 2030 because they are not able to have the same progress in redu reduction of carbon dioxide until 2020, and that's the negotiation we have and we started yesterday, and uh, it was a very frank and very open debate like we never had in the past. Uh, and I'm sure that the, the government wants to be serious uh, uh, in the negotiations. Real, real quickly, if you were to say, what were the two or three things that remain to be the biggest impediments on the U.S. side from moving forward, your biggest differences between Germany or Europe and the United States, what do you think those two or three really big whopping differences are? The biggest uh, difference is the, uh, the, the emissions, what, what we want to reduce until 2020. Right. There, the Europeans are much more ambitious like the U.S. But of course, we, we, I think we have to accept that it's a difference if you start in 1994, like we did, or 1997, or this, you, you start in 99, uh, 2009. It's much more difficult for the U.S. Uh, to have the same progress in reducing carbon dioxide. So now we are looking for compromises and additionally uh, measurements may be the question how we can uh, reduce deforestation okay. in the rainforest areas. <coughs> of course, 20% of the global climate problem comes out of the deforestation in rainforests. So that can be additionally measurements mm. uh, to, to, be, to, to reduce our common targets in 2020, 2030, 2050. That's a very detailed debate. And so the reason why I'm very optimistic uh, in respect to the American government and the willingness to come to a solution in, at the end of the year is we never had a detailed debate before. Mm. We were in complete different parts of the street or on other sides of the street um, uh, in the question in substance, um, in the questions of should we do something or should we not. Uh, and uh, these debates are over, mm -hmm. the United States is on board on, in the climate issue, uh, and there's another issue I think we should discuss with our American friends. In your country, in the US, the debate is often a debate about energy prices and uh, the consequences and the burdens for the uh, citizens. Right. In my country it's completely different. We know, of course, energy prices will ri raise, but the bill for energy will decrease and mm. fall uh, because we invest in energy efficiency. For my citizens, it's not interesting, interesting to, to, to know how big is the price for a kilowatt per hour. It's interesting what's the bill in the month. Right. So, and we have to reduce the bill f in a month and in a year and the next years. So you're achieving efficiency and yes, cutting emissions, of course. Of course. I mean, let, me, let me just ask one last question. I, I had the opportunity last night with uh, John Kerry, Senator John Kerry, at a small forum at the Wilson Center to talk with him about environmental issues. And he said something which really disturbed me. Um, he said, if we do everything well, if we, if, if we moved America into a more aggressive position right now on these issues, that when you listen to the scientists and where they think if we get everything right from a public policy perspective that we put on the table now, um, the challenge is, is, is to keep the global climate from getting two degrees hotter. He says, well, what he's hearing is that if we get everything down, we decrease carbon uh, uh, levels in the atmosphere uh, to 250 or 300 parts per million from the higher level here, we're still looking at a two and a half degree temperature rise, which he says will still have catastrophic consequences for the earth and, and for uh, the human, human race. Does that, does that bleak uh, reality, if it's true, uh, frustrate the ability to move forward? If, if you begin feeling we're sunk already, can you really convince the publics to pay the costs of, of doing it? I, I, I was very stunned by John Kerry's comment last night. First of all, I do not see the cost. I see the profit. Mm. I mean, there is no field of the economy where you get a profit without investment at first. Right. 
So if you do not invest now, you have to pay much more in the future. Uh, even if Kerry is right and the temperature will rise to two, two uh, uh, and a half degrees, uh, it's much less dangerous than the raise of the temperature by four, five, six degrees. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, second uh, issue, we should discuss now how we will come out, out of the crisis. I think we have to come out of the crisis more efficient, more productive, uh, more modern than we started in the crisis. It's not very intelligent to invest billions of dollars and euros in the conservation of the economy like we have it today. Sure. It's interesting to invest now in the modernization of the economy. So that's not the question of uh, making no profit. The profit will come in the future that we see in Germany. In the last years, we got 280,000 additional jobs only in the field of renewable energies. We are not su such a big country like the US, but 280,000 new jobs in my country is huge. That's, that's huge. We and need a, a few over here. <laughs> and and, and, a, and, a, and a th the third argument is the question, do we come to the limit of two degrees temperature rise or it's more. That's the question to China, India and other parts of the negotiation. I mean, if all the industrialized countries will reduce to zero, we will not be out of danger in the consequence of climate change. Right. Because the, these emerging countries, they will blow more uh, carbon dioxide emissions in the atmosphere than we can reduce. So. The first is the debate among the developed countries, but the second debate we need is the debate with the developing countries. Right. Of course, there are parts of the developing countries which need help from us, not everyone. China, I think, is strong enough to do uh, their own job, but there are some others in Africa, in Latin America and, Af and Asia, and uh, we are searching for win-win situations. We develop the technology for low-carbon economies, and they need it. Um, so that's also the question to our industry. Do you want that the next cars without emissions comes from Japan and Korea and China or you want to be part of the market in the future? Right. Uh, and so I'm not dangerous uh, that we cannot reach the targets. It's a question what are the developed countries are willing to do and what are the developing countries are willing to do. And the second is we should not discuss in a way like the enemies of the climate policy do it that's only burdens on the shoulders of our citizens. Uh, I, I have to pay by my energy bill for electricity, like every other German citizens, two euros per month mm. for the supporting of renewable energies. Right. I think two euros per month for the future of my daughter is not very expensive. I agree. Thank Minister you. Gabriel, thank you very much. Thank we look you. forward to maybe talking to you after Paris and after Copenhagen, and you can give us a report card on, on okay. how well or badly we're doing. Do so. Thanks thank very you. much. Thank you.